Welcome to Cuba. So I'm overnighting here in Havana to show what else there is to this city outside of just rum, cigars and classic cars. But we'll get to that later. On my way to the hotel, I get to check off my first activity on the list, a visit to the Malacon. Now if you're here for two weeks or one day, it doesn't matter. Everyone must visit the Malacon. This five mile road hugs the coastline of the city originally called San Cristobal de la Havana. The Hotel Nacional. 70 years ago, this Art Deco hotel would play home to celebrities, diplomats and gangsters alike. Sinatra, Hemingway, Astaire and Luciano would all have enjoyed a few mojitos on the famous garden terrace where the Chesterville chairs are as large as the characters that sat in them. Right, that's my bags dropped off. I think it's time for a spot of lunch. El Corte de Principe. It's mythology that good food doesn't exist in Havana. You just need to know where to go. After lunch, grab a taxi back into town and why not hit the little-known community of Cayón de Jamal, an entire neighborhood dedicated to the Afro-Cuban religion of Santeria. You can admire the murals and sculptures and the best way to explore it is on foot. Live music seeps out of the walls daily in Havana, but come here on Sundays and shake a tail feather to the beat of rumba. After a spot of early afternoon dancing and a shot of rum, why not relax with a cigar? If you are a cigar aficionado, crawl through the corridors to the hidden cigar shop in Hotel Florida and watch a master at work. Recent policy changes now allow Americans to take home $100 worth of cigars and rum. And if you're lost for choice, why not plump for a cohiba? La Guarida. A weathered and unspectacular exterior disguises well the stunning interior of La Guarida, which sets the standard for private restaurants or paladars. Spanning over three floors, just make sure you don't get lost on the way up. Despite its enormous and ever-increasing popularity, it remains somewhere that needs to be on the list of your things to do. And this is La Guarida. After a sunset cocktail at La Guarida, I'm off to El Cocinero, which boasts a great restaurant on the second floor and the best bar in town on the roof. Now in Cuba, you can stay out as long as you want, especially from Thursday to Sunday, and I'm heading to the party at Jardines de la Tropical. In classic Cuban fashion, I found some friends to show me how to break dance. If you can manage to stay up till dawn, you'll see that these gardens, courtyards and palace were once a lush 19th century estate. It's tough to find a good breakfast in Cuba, but fortunately their coffee makes up for it. After my morning coffee, I'm going to have breakfast like a local and buy some plantains off a local fruit merchant, which you can find on any street corner. These plantains won't hurt your wallet either. They'll set you back just eight cents US. Muchísimas gracias. So that's it. That's the end of my 24 hours, one day and night in Havana. And I'm off now on my road trip. And if you're doing a road trip, it's very important you pick the right car.